right guys, so in 3.6 what we're going to be doing is looking at the derivative of logs. So what we're going to use is what we learned about implicit differentiation. So before we get started on this proof, I just want to remind you that you can rewrite <coughs> y equals the natural log of x. You can rewrite that as e to the y equals x. The reason is, is because they're inverses. So, what that means is that finding the derivative of this is the same as trying to find the derivative of this. So, let's go ahead and focus on this right-hand side and find its derivative. So, the derivative of e to the y would just be e to the y. But remember, from the section where we did implicit differentiation, we have to multiply by y prime anytime we take the derivative with respect to y. Equals, and then derivative of x is just 1. So, now what we're going to do is that we are going to solve for y prime so that we can actually get the derivative. So this is going to become y prime equals 1 over e to the y. <clears throat> now that's great, except for I wanted to solve the derivative with respect to x and not with respect to y. So if we look right back up here, e to the y is equal to x. So I can rewrite this as 1 over x. What we just proved is that if you take the derivative of the natural log of x, it will equal 1 over over x. Pretty neat. Okay, now if you have a log that's a different base, <coughs> for example if you have log base 10 or log base 2, which are very common logs, then the derivative is going to be 1 over the natural log of a x. So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples. So for example, let's say we want to find the derivative of the following. We want to find the derivative of the natural log of x cubed. So if we go back up to this previous rule, what it states is that the derivative of the natural log of whatever you put inside is going to equal 1 divided by the inside. So we're going to have to use that chain rule here. So our outside is the natural log. Our inside is going to be x cubed. So the derivative of this guy, we'll call it y prime, would be 1 over, leave the inside alone, x cubed, times, now what's the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. Now, I would usually leave it like that, but it's just, it's too good. I don't want to leave it like that. It's so easy to simplify it. So I can simplify this down to 3 divided by x would be my derivative. Now on the next one, what we have is that our outside function is that we're actually cubing the natural log, and then our inside function is the natural log. So the derivative for this one would be, well, the derivative of something cubed is going to be 3, leave the inside alone, squared, times the derivative of that inside piece which again, if you want to rewrite that just so it looks a little bit better, that would be 3 natural log of x, that whole thing squared, divided by x. All right, now on the next one, we're going to have to use the chain rule again. So the outside is sine, the inside is the natural log. So the derivative of sine is cosine, leave the inside alone times the derivative of the inside, which is 1 over x. Again, you can rewrite that a little bit better. So the cosine natural log of x divided by x. All right, last but not least, we have log base 10 of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, if we scroll up here again, that's a different base. So that's base 10, that's not natural log base. So remember, whatever our base is, we're going to be multiplying that times the x in the denominator. 
So, here, the derivative of log base 10 of whatever I have inside is going to be 1 divided by the natural log of 10 times that inside. Remember, we have to leave the inside alone whenever we're doing the chain rule. Times, and now we're going to multiply the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside piece is going to be 1 plus, now we're going to use the chain rule again on this piece. So that'd be 1 half, leave the inside alone, to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. Very nice. We actually had to use the chain rule twice here. We had to use it on this natural log of 10 piece. And then we also had to use it on the square root piece. All right. Now, for this one, what we want to do is we want to find the derivative in its domain given f of x equals the square root of 3 plus the natural log of x. So first, let's find the derivative. So remember, any time that we have something and we're taking the square root, we can rewrite that as that function to the 1 half power. So take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside piece alone. Whoops, that's an x. To the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside piece, so the derivative of 3 plus the natural log of x. Remember, the derivative of 3 is just 0. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Now, because I have to find the domain, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So because this is a negative exponent right here, okay, that's going to go in the denominator. So this whole thing is going to simplify to 1 over 2 is in the denominator, x is in the denominator, and then because I made that a positive, it's going to go in the denominator. And remember, raising something to the 1 half is the same thing as taking the square root. All right, so now when I'm taking the domain, this is going to be a little bit of review. It's probably been a term or two or maybe even a couple years since you've taken the domain of a function. What we don't want to do is that we absolutely don't want to divide by 0. Okay? So... One thing is that we don't want this x to be 0. Another thing that we want is that we don't want to be taking the square root of any numbers that are negative. So we want this guy to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So what that means is that we need the natural log of x to be greater than 3, negative 3. So that, hmm, how can I solve this? What does that mean? So remember <coughs> that y equaling the natural log of x, you can rewrite that as saying e to the y equals x. Okay? So what this means is that we need our x value to be greater than e to the negative third power. Okay, so that would be our domain right there. All right, and now, finally, the very last one is that we're going to use log rules so that we can take some derivatives easier. Okay, so the first thing that you do when you're going to be logarithmically differentiating, <laughs> differentiating something is the first step is that you want to take the natural log of both sides. So for this first example, we're going to rewrite that as the natural log of y equals the natural log of x plus 2 squared times x to the fifth minus 7x to the sixth. All right, so you can kind of think of that as like taking the square root of both sides or taking the sine of both sides, right? If you apply an operation to one side, you have to apply it to the other. Now the second step is that we want to expand that right hand side using log rules. So I'm going to have the natural log of y equals, now when I expand this right hand side out, here's the first thing I'm going to do, is that you can split up a natural log into two natural logs, but the multiplication on the inside becomes addition. So 
that would be the natural log of x plus 2 squared plus the natural log of x to the fifth minus 7x to the sixth. Okay, so again, what happens is that you can split a single log up into two logs, but the multiplication on the inside will become addition. Now I can split this up even further. One of my favorite log rules is that if you have an exponent, so I'll do that in a different color. If you have an exponent, what you can do is that you can kick it out in front and it becomes multiplication instead of an exponent. So that two would be kicked out in front and that would be two natural log x plus two plus, <coughs> and over here again, that six is gonna get kicked out in front. So that'd be 6 natural log x to the fifth minus 7x. Great. Now that's as far as we can expand it. So unless you're doing multiplication or division on the inside or you have exponents, you're done. I can't split this up any further because they're adding. Same thing here. I can't split these two guys up because they're adding. All right. Now the third step is that we want to take the derivative of both sides and then solve for y. So the derivative of this right-hand side, the derivative of the natural log of y, it's going to be 1 over y. But don't forget, we still need to multiply by y prime. Equals. Now, remember, whenever you're taking the derivative and you have a constant out in front, that constant's just going to hang out, so it's going to be 2 times the derivative of the natural log of x plus 2. Well, the derivative of the natural log is just 1 over whatever's on the inside. And then here's something neat, the derivative of x plus 2 is just 1. Not bad. Plus, now again, 6, because we're multiplying by the constants, is going to hang out. The derivative of the natural log of blah is 1 over blah, so 1 over that inside. Times the derivative of that inside, so it's going to be 5x to the 4th, minus 7. All right, now what we need to do is that we need to clean this up just a little bit. So we have 1 over y times y prime equals 2 over x plus 2 plus, and I'm going to go ahead and put that 6 on top, 6 times 5x to the 4th minus 7, all divided by x to the 5th minus 7x. Now, here's the deal, is that I want to take the derivative. So I want to solve for y prime. So I need to get rid of that y, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So that's going to give me that my derivative, y prime, equals 2 over x plus 2 plus 6 times 5x to the 4th minus 7 divided by x to the fifth minus 7, all times y. Now, <coughs> we're actually running into a little bit of another issue here. Usually when I take the derivative, I want it in terms of only x. I don't want this y hanging out. So is there any way that I can change this so that the y is in terms of x? Well, yes, I can. If I scroll up, do, do, do. I remember that y equals this whole pretty thing right here. So I can just substitute that right back in. So what this is going to become is I'm going to exchange that y for my original function, which was x plus 2 squared times x to the fifth minus 7x to the sixth. And that would be the derivative. So that is how you would find the derivative of something um, using logarithmic differentiation. Okay. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video and take a whack at the next two on your own. All right, so on the next one, okay, we are going to have the natural log of y equals the natural log of the square root of x plus 2 divided by x to the fifth minus 7. Now again, we want to rewrite this, okay, right-hand side. So remember, 
if I'm taking the square root of something, I can rewrite that as that something to the 1 half. So this is going to be the natural log of y equals 1 half times the natural log of x plus 2 divided by x to the fifth minus 7. Now again, I'm dividing here. So what does division turn into if I want to split this up into multiple natural logs? It's going to turn into subtraction. So this is going to be the natural log of y equals 1 half natural log of x plus 2 minus, we have to carry that 1 half through, natural log x to the fifth minus 7. All right, so now that we've expanded that using log rules, now we're ready to take the derivative. So the derivative of the right-hand side is going to be 1 over y times y prime equals, remember that constant on the right-hand side is going to hang out in front. And the derivative of the natural log of x plus 2 is going to be 1 over that inside times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, minus, again, the 1 half just hangs out in front. The derivative of the natural log of x to the fifth minus 7 is going to be 1 over that inside left alone. But don't forget, we still need to multiply by the derivative of that inside. Okay, cleaning this up a little bit. I have 1 over y times y prime equals 1 over 2 times x plus 2 minus 2 times x to the fifth minus 7. And then on top, instead of having that 1, we are going to have that 5x to the fourth. Now, just like the previous example, we want to get that y prime by itself, so we need to multiply both sides by that y. And just like last time, what we want to do is that we want to get this all in terms of x. So we want that right-hand side to be all in terms of x. So just like before, remember, we know y equals this guy. So we can just substitute in instead of y we can substitute in the square root of x plus 2 divided by x to the fifth minus 7. And then this would be our final answer. If you need some brushing up on log rules, um, I posted a cheat sheet on our website, so be sure to take a look at that. Okay, and also feel free to email me if you have any questions. All right, this last one is actually one of my favorite ones to do. <laughs> so let's go ahead and logarithmic differentiate this. And the reason it's one of my favorite ones to do is because you look at it and you have this like, um, I don't know, this conflict of like, well, do I bring the x down in front first and subtract 1 from it? Or do I have to use the chain rule? Or like, what do I do first? So we're going to go ahead and use logarithmic differentiation and it'll help us out here. So we're going to take Do, 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 do. There we go. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. Just like that. Now, just like before, now what that helps me do is it kind of helps me solve that conflict of having an x and the exponent and the base. I can take that x and bring it down in front. So this becomes the natural log of y equals x times the natural log of x. Now when I take the derivative, that left-hand side is going to be 1 over y times y prime equals, and now on this side, I'm super good at this, I just have to use the product rule. So that's going to be 1 times the natural log of x plus x times, well what's the natural log of x? That derivative is 1 over x. So what this becomes is it actually becomes something really nice. It's 1 over y times y prime equals the natural log of x plus 1. And again, just like last time, we need to multiply both sides by y. And then again, we want it in terms of x, so we're going to use that first fact, and we're going to replace the y with an x to the x. So the derivative of this guy is going to be the natural log of x 
plus 1 times x to the x. As a little hint, I would use this, especially if I had something that looked like this, I would use the same technique. So if I had like sine of x raised to the x power or something similar, I would use this technique. 